to sit back and teach. Today's topic is the four principles of natural selection. Remember that natural selection is the process that causes evolution to occur. It is what makes changes in species happen, and there's four main principles that allow natural selection to happen in the wild. Overproduction, variation, adaptation, and selection. Let's start with overproduction. Overproduction means that in the wild, populations tend to create more offspring than can actually survive and reproduce. Let me introduce us to our fish friends today, who will show us some examples of the four principles of natural selection. First, we have our friend Jerry. Jerry has stripes, and that will be important later. Next, we have Linda, and Linda does not have stripes. Jerry and Linda have eggs. They have hundreds of eggs. Remember that scene in Finding Nemo when the scary fish eats all of Marvin's eggs except for Nemo? Not all of the fish eggs will grow up to be adult fish. Some eggs might be eaten by a barracuda like in Finding Nemo. Some might not be able to find enough food. Some might get eaten later when they're adults. Unfortunately, not every offspring will make it. That's why most species overproduce, so that at least some of them will make it to adulthood and have offspring of their own. Next, let's talk about variation. Variation is the concept that individuals in a population differ from each other. And this is due to random genetic variations or mutations. When we say they differ from each other, we mean they're different. Humans are a great example of variation. We are all the same species, homo sapiens, but we all look different from each other. We have variations in skin color, height, eye color, hair color, or texture. Some of us have curly hair or straight hair. Our personalities are different. Humans have so much variation in our species, which is one of the things that makes humans very cool. So here we have our friends, Jerry and Linda again. Remember, Jerry has stripes and Linda doesn't. Jerry and Linda are also the same species as each other. They're the same species of fish, but they have variations. They have differences from each other. So they have variation within their species as well. Jerry has stripes and Linda doesn't. I told you this would be important later. And on to our next principle of natural selection. The next principle is called adaptation. Adaptation is the concept that some individuals in a population have a trait that makes them better able to survive. Now first, let's address that the word adaptation can be confusing. In everyday life, we use the word adapt to mean change. But in science, an adaptation is something that an organism is born with that helps it to survive. For example, if a bunny is born with the ability to run faster than the other bunnies, it is better adapted to survive because it can escape wolves and other predators better than the other bunnies. It has an adaptation. Jerry and Linda are good examples of adaptation as well. Let's say that Jerry and Linda are hanging out on the bottom of the ocean. They like to hang out in the seaweed when they nap. Take a look and decide which one you think might blend in better with the seaweed. Jerry says, my stripes help me blend in. And you can see that he would be a little bit harder for a predator to find. Realizing she doesn't blend in quite as well, Linda says, uh-oh. If a predator were to swim by, the predator would probably see Linda first. And on to our last principle of natural selection. The last principle of natural selection is selection. Selection is the concept that organisms with a beneficial adaptation, like Jerry and his stripes, 
are more likely to survive and reproduce and pass on that trait. If an organism is more likely to survive longer, then it's more likely to have offspring. If it has offspring, then it could pass on its traits to its offspring. Therefore, their traits are likely to become more common in the population. Let's think about Jerry and Linda again. So we have Jerry with his stripes and Linda with no stripes. And which do you think is more likely to survive in the wild? Looking at our seaweed example, I think Jerry is more likely to survive longer than Linda. Sorry, Linda. So if Jerry survives longer, he's more likely to have more baby fish than Linda. So that means that the next generation of fish will have more of Jerry's genes and less of Linda's genes. So the next population will probably look a lot more like Jerry than like Linda. So how does natural selection work? Populations create more offspring than can survive, and the offspring are not all the same. They have variations. Since they have variations, some will be better adapted or more likely to survive than others. The ones that survive are more likely to be able to have offspring and will pass on that trait. Because of all of this, populations can have changes in their traits over time. So that's how natural selection works. It works through these four principles of natural selection.